Hi there. This video is an introduction to the Style Scanner program for beginner C++ programmers. In our C++ courses at CUNY Kingsborough, we want to learn how to make our code easy to read and to use a professional style. So we have a program called Style Scanner that gives feedback on those kinds of items. This is a standard console program that takes a command line argument for what code to scan that is normal for how system software usually works. But if this is new to you, you may need a walkthrough to get started, and that's what you'll get in this video. Now, I'm doing this on Windows 11, and I'm using Dev C++ to compile the style scanner. If you are on a different operating system or you're using a different IDE, hopefully you can figure out this process with your tools. At the end, we'll briefly note some other ways you can do this. The description of this video should have some added links, and with that, we can get started. Okay, so the very first thing to do is to go to the GitHub page where we keep the style scanner source code. Uh, this is where we're going to download it from. There ought to be a link to this page on the description of the video that you're currently watching. And once you're here, you can look at the rather short README with some directions on how to use this. Of course, Style Scanner, this program scans starting student C++ code files for basic styling errors. You can see down here in boldface what we're going to type to run the program after we've built it. And this link right here ought to be a link to the video that you're currently watching. But what we want to do is we want to get the source code file. There's just one here. It's called stylescanner.cpp. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, you can read the file if you want to. But what we really want to do is to download it locally so we can build it. I'm going to use this button right here to download the raw source code file. And where I'm going to save that is I'm going to save it in the home folder on my operating system. Now, that's the folder that probably has my name on it. My name is Daniel, and you can see that by default, the save dialog wants to save it here. So at least to begin with, that's probably the easiest thing to do. I'm going to save it in the home folder with my name on it right there. Having done that, we don't need GitHub anymore, so I'm going to close this. But what I do need is I need to access that home folder in my file explorer. There's probably a bunch of stuff there already. The thing that's new that we just downloaded is this file right here, stylescanner.cpp. So I want to take that and actually build it into an executable. For me, it might be different for you, but for me, I'm going to double click on this and it's going to open up in Dev C++. And again, you can read it here if you want to, kind of a long file. But the thing I'm really interested in is just compiling this. So I'm going to hit my compile button. Hopefully this will build the executable. And you can see here that, yeah, that succeeded. So it compiled with zero errors, zero warnings, and it did build a new file in that location called stylescanner.exe. So that's all we needed Dev C++ for. At this point, I'm just going to close it. You can see that we have that new file there. There is stylescanner.exe. So now I have stylescanner built and I can actually run it. In order to test it, of course, I need another source code file to actually scan and get a report out of. So just for something to test, I guess I'm going to go to the Gaddis C++ book. I'm just going to get the very first program out of the book and out of chapter one, and I'm going to copy it in here. Now, it's much, much easier if you have the file to scan in the same folder as the executable. That's very important. So be aware of where your executable is and put the file to scan in the same folder is what we're doing here at the moment. So having gotten that stuff in the same folder, now on my operating system, I'm going to open up the terminal application that lets me run system software like this. So for me on Windows, I'm going to my start bar. I'm hunting for terminal, the terminal application. There it is. So this is where I can type commands to run system software type things like our style scanner program. You can see that by default, it opens up in the home directory, the home folder that's got my name on it. So that's why this is kind of a little bit convenient. And now in order to run the program, the executable that we've got here, we're going to type dot slash and then style scanner. Again, that's the name of our executable, a space. And then here for the command line argument is the name of the file to scan. And that, in this case, is this pr1-1.cpp. And then I hit Enter. So get a little report on this. 
what could have been styled better in this source code file, pr11.cpp. And let's think about a little bit of what we just did there. So to begin with, with that command, the dot slash says to look for an executable in the current folder, the current folder right there. Now on Windows, for me, that's a backslash. If you're working on a Mac or a Unix, that would be a forward slash in the other direction. So keep that in mind. Uh, again, this right here is the name of the executable that we're running. You could have written stylescanner.exe right here, but the operating system just assumes, of course, you're running executable program, so you don't need to do that. The space, as usual, is a separator between tokens. So one issue is that if you have a source code file to scan and it's got spaces in the file name, that now will look like three separate things and will confuse what you're trying to do. So if your source code file and here pr1-1.cpp does not have any spaces, so this was kind of easy. If your source code file does have spaces, you're gonna to have to put it in double quotes to connect it all together and get the terminal to realize that that's just one thing. So really the upshot is it's much easier if you don't put spaces in your file names. Normally we avoid putting spaces on file names because of this and a bunch of other issues when you're working with systems like that. The other lesson that we could take here is that having scanned uh, the very first program in our textbook, um, it's pretty close. It's not perfect for the styling that we prefer. It's pretty close. And you can see here that the three things that Style Scanner didn't like about it is that first of all, it didn't have the dev C++ comment header that we like to use. Uh, we like to use tabs for the indents and they didn't do you, they didn't do that. And we also like to have a lead in comment right before each function, including the main function. So that would be pretty easy to fix up if we wanted to make that perfect. And the code in uh, the Gaddis textbook is, is generally pretty good. Okay, so that's normally how we are running the style scanner program like that. Let's think about some ways that uh, this could be maybe a little bit easier for us. Now, one thing that I'm not super happy with what we just did is putting every single file in the home folder starts to get a little cluttered. If we look at that again, it was starting to get a little confusing about exactly what files we were working on there. So it's probably a better idea for each project, for each program you work on, to have a separate folder just for that project. I'm gonna make a new folder here on my operating system. It's currently empty. And I'm just gonna move the files that we're really working with over here. And then I don't have to look at that kind of cluttered home folder all the time. That's probably a better idea. Now, when I wanna run the Style Scanner program or any executable here on Windows, what I can do is I can point at this folder in the graphical user interface. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna click on the right hand button on my mouse. And on Windows, I get this context menu. And the thing that I wanna do is open in terminal, open this folder in the terminal. So you get this exact same terminal, but instead of opening in the home folder with my name Daniel on it, it's opening it up in the folder that I'm actually looking at right here, located there. And having done that, now you can just run the program the exact same way. So again, I'll type dot slash style scanner space, name of the file that I wanna scan and enter. You get that exact same report. So that's really, really convenient. Now again, this is on Windows. On a Mac, you don't have that same open terminal in this location option by default. What you do have is there is a setting that you on a Mac that you can set up a hotkey to make that happen. It doesn't happen by default. In the description of this video, there should be a link to how you can set that up on a Mac. Probably a good idea to do that, make that a little bit more convenient. So this is, this is probably a better way of actually running it. Now, what I do myself, if we talk about some other options, what I do myself, if you know about the system path on your operating system, you can indicate folders that it will look for programs to run automatically. And what I do is I add the folder for a style scanner on my system path, and then I can run it from anywhere. I don't have to copy my source code files around all the time. Just in any folder, I can open up the terminal, type style scanner, and it just runs it and scans whatever file that I wanna do. I think that's the most convenient thing to do, but you do need to know about how to edit the system path to make that happen. 
Other things you could do is you could run the style scanner from one single place and you could, instead of copying other files in, you could indicate where the other file is, where the target file is, by giving it a complete path name. Uh, not super convenient, but it would work. And the other thing that I can think of you could possibly do is you could open up Style Scanner in DevC++ or some other IDE. And in DevC++, you could click on the menu on Execute and then Parameters, and you can indicate what command line argument you want. In this case, that would be the target file to scan. Um, and that would work. I don't think that's super convenient because then you'd have to open up Dev C++ every single time you want to scan a file and there's no need to do that. So probably what we just did here is probably a better thing to do. So hopefully that gives you a good starting basis for how to scan your files for basic styling issues and maybe more importantly, getting used to using the terminal like we normally do for command line arguments for system software like this, which is kind of the standard way to interact with professional programs. So hopefully that is instructional and helpful for you and I'll plan to see you in another video.